Shalom family, this is Brother Daryl, and in this lesson, we'll be discussing the real Esau. And I'll let the cat out of the bag right now. He's not the white man. He's the Arab. Let's get to work. This is the first mention of Esau in the scriptures, right here in Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And many people, Alphabet Camp Israelites in particular, will tell you that he came out looking like a sunburned, hairy, white person. This is false, and I'll demonstrate precisely why using the Hebrew. The Hebrew word that was translated to red in Genesis 25, 25 is admoni. Admoni is a red-brown color from the root word adom. Adom means red-brown, like the earth from which Adam, the first man, was formed. That is the significance of this word and the true color that it denotes, red earth. Notice that this word admoni is also used in 1 Samuel 17.42 to describe King David. So if Esau is white, that would make King David white too, right? So anyone arguing that Esau is white is also, by definition, arguing that King David is white, which is utter nonsense. You see here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 42, that King David is also described as ruddy or red in the English translation, but in the Hebrew, it's admoni, meaning red like the earth. By the way, when it says that David was of fair countenance, that word in the Hebrew is yafe, meaning beautiful. So don't get sidetracked with that. A lot of people who push false doctrine will try to tell you that David was white based on that. No, don't fall for the okie doke. This is a correct representation of how King David would have looked. What the scriptures are saying is that David, like Esau, was what we would call a red bone. This is how Esau would have looked according to the scriptures. Study and show yourself approved and rightly divide the word, family. Don't be deceived by the false doctrine going out in the world right now. Let the scriptures speak and receive what they give you, regardless of whether you like it or not. It is what it is. Even if Esau was not black, his children certainly were. Why do I say that? Well, he took three black wives, two Canaanites, who are children of Ham and black by definition, and an Ishmaelite. Ishmael was Abraham's son, born of his concubine Hagar, who was an Egyptian, also a child of Ham. This is how Esau's children would have looked. These are the Arabs who did not heavily mix their bloodlines with the Greeks, and we'll dive into that entire subject in just a moment. For now, let's identify the kingdom of Edom, which is also called Idumea in the scriptures. Genesis chapter 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Mount Seir is located directly south of Israel. This is where Esau settled and where his descendants built the kingdom of Edom. Not Europe, Arabia. Let's delve into the prophecies regarding the judgment of Edom. Isaiah chapter 34, verses 5 and 6. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse, to judgment. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, with the blood of lambs and goats, and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh hath a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. So on the last day, the Most High will exercise his vengeance on the land of Idumea, he also specifically mentions a place called Basra. 
Keep that in mind. Let's move forward. Isaiah chapter 63 verses 1 through 4. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, in thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them down in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and it will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So these people are going to be trodden down like grapes in a wine press. Ugly, brutal imagery. According to the scriptures, Yahweh despises Esau. So let's figure out exactly where Edom is. Well, we see that the kingdom of Edom is just south of Judea, and it's located right there in Arabia. Nowhere in the scriptures or in extra biblical sources is it indicated that Edom somehow took over Europe. That's nonsense. It's dummy doctrine, and it's time to discard it. See where Basra is? It's located in Moabite territory, not very far from Edom, and that's why it's mentioned so often with Edom in the scriptures. So let's go ahead and see what the Bible scholars have to say about the identity of Esau. This is the definition of dress in Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's see what it says. It says that Esau and Ishmael and their descendants took a certain style of clothing with them into Arabia, where the Arab continued them through the centuries. So according to the Zondervan scholars, the same people, mind you, who inform you that the so-called Negroes are not Hamites, tell you that Esau is the Arab. And according to the Blue Letter Bible Dictionary's lexicon under the name Esau, he is identified as the progenitor of the Arab people. So you have some solid scriptural, geographical, and extra-biblical evidence that definitely indicates that Esau is the Arab and not the white man, who is Japheth. Let's get into just a few more bits of evidence further confirming who Esau really is. Esau was prophesied to live by the sword. Not only were the Bedouin Arabs known to be extremely warlike, they also maintain a tradition of carrying swords. These are images of a Saudi Arabian sword dance. This is how a big brother Esau gets down, with swords. And the Arabs are still extremely warlike. If you doubt me, ask a Yemeni if you can find one that's still alive. The Saudi Arabians also maintain a tradition of beheading people by the sword. So they live up to the prophecies concerning them. Indeed, these folks live by the sword. So right about now, you're probably wondering how Esau went from looking like this to looking like this. Well, that difference comes from the mixing of Esau's seed with the Greeks. I promise that we get back to that, so here we go. According to Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 10, Esau's seed is spoiled. And he spoiled it with the Greeks. So let's get to the book of Jasher and get a precept. Right here 
in Jasher chapter 90, verses 7 through 9, you can see that Edom became one with the kingdom of Chittim, or Kittim, depending on your pronunciation. Well, Kittim would be the Greeks, specifically the Greeks of the Mediterranean Isles, Cyprus in particular. These people are of a Greek lineage, children of Javan, who is, of course, a Japhethite. Those of you who have read the book of Maccabees are also well aware of this fact. You can go to Maccabees chapter 1 and see that Alexander the Great came out of the land of Kittim. Alexander the Great conquered much of the so-called Middle East, and the bloodlines of Edom were heavily mixed during this time and for centuries afterward as a result of the miscegenation between the Greeks and the Arabs. So why is the identity of Esau so important? Well, there are some interesting end times prophecies regarding Esau. Esau is prophesied to be in a position of rulership over the world at the very end. And many people have argued that an Islamic caliphate will rise and that will be the form of the beast kingdom prophesied in the book of Revelation. And that theory certainly fits very well with many of the prophecies contained right there in the book of Revelation, because those who hold the witness of Yahshua are prophesied to be beheaded. Now, there's only one religion that advocates the severing of the heads of non-believers. And that religion is Islam the religion of Esau. Now, in a previous video on the origins of the Jewish people, we uncovered the fact that the cube representation of God is in fact the worship of Satan in the form of the false god Saturn. Well, Esau also worships Satan. However, instead of calling him Satan or Saturn, Esau calls him Allah. It becomes very clear when you review the name of Allah in the Arabic. Arabic, much like Hebrew, is a very pictographic language. Hebrew and Arabic are both Afro-Asiatic languages. They're related languages because Esau is Jacob's big brother. It all starts to make perfect sense when you really stop to consider it. Now, in this picture, we can clearly see that Allah is depicted as a snake with the rod of rulership to his right and a crown upon his head. When Adam fell, he surrendered his dominion over the earth given to him by Yahweh to the serpent. And that's why Satan is referred to as the God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And people will try to tell you that Allah and Yahweh are the same God. Nothing could be further from the truth. Yahweh is not a man that he should lie. However, this Allah character is apparently the best of deceivers. Just like Satan, who is called the serpent, who deceives the whole world in the book of Revelation. And Esau worships him. And this is exactly why Yahweh hates Esau. And Yahweh has already prophesied that he's going to utterly destroy Esau's lineage. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh hath spoken it. Anyone who does not confess Yahshua as the begotten Son of the Most High is condemned, period. 
If you look into the statistics, 100% of Saudi Arabians are Muslims, and the overwhelming majority of the Arabs in the surrounding countries are Muslims as well. And when you go ahead and precept that with John chapter 3 verse 18, you see exactly why Esau will be utterly wiped out in the judgment to come. They don't believe in the lamb, so they won't be shielded from the wrath of the lamb by his blood. A final thought. You should ask yourself why these alphabet camps like Israel United in Christ go around proclaiming that Esau is the white man. That makes absolutely no sense. Also, why do they pro proclaim that Joseph is the actual father of the Messiah? That's in direct contradiction to Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25, as well as Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 35. If this is a doctrine that you've been adhering to, I highly recommend that you reread those specific verses and come to an understanding. So is it possible that these alphabet camps have a secretive agenda that you and I aren't aware of? I advise you to do your own research and be extremely wary about whom you receive doctrine from. So as always, family, thank you so much for your time. Shalom. I'll see you next video. And until then, keep your eyes open and your head up.